Hello everybody, welcome back to our journey through the season of Lent using the works of Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Today's excerpt is taken from Bonhoeffer's book, Ethics, and we haven't yet come across ethics in our series yet. Uh, ethics is quite a dense book, philosophical at times, um, but profound nonetheless. It is Bonhoeffer's work on well, ethics, on Christian ethics, um, and how do Christians live ethically in this world. And what we need to know a little bit is that Bonhoeffer didn't, in some sense, write a book. Uh, throughout the years, he wanted to write this book, and, and he would, you know, tinker with papers and, and outlines, and maybe this here and there, and over the course of years, he had all of these little uh, scraps of writing kind of strewn about which after his death then was kind of collected and compiled um, and became the book as we know, Ethics. The title given to our selection today is The Idolization of Death. Dietrich writes, The miracle of Christ's resurrection has overturned the idolization of death that rules among us. Where death is final, fear of it combines with defiance. Where death is final, earthly life is all or nothing. Defiant striving for earthly eternities goes together with a careless playing with life, anxious affirmation of life with an indifferent contempt for life. Nothing betrays the idolization of death more clearly than when an era claims to build for eternity, and yet life in that era is worth nothing. When big words are spoken about a new humanity, a new world, a new society that will be created, and all this newness consists only in the annihilation of existing life. The radicality of this yes and no to earthly life reveals that only death counts. To rake in everything or to throw away everything, this is the attitude of one who believes fanatically in death. Okay, so we're going through Lent, and Lent is a time of self-examination. Uh, it's a time where we look at our lives, and in some sense we assess them, we examine them. How are we living before the Lord? How are we living out our relationship with Jesus? And it's self-examination because we take a critical look. Are there things in our life that needs to change? Um, so we look at our habits. We might look at um, sins or, or um, things that we do which take us away from the presence of God. And we ask ourselves, are there challenges to our life of faith um, that Jesus calls us to address so that we can move further and deeper in the life that Jesus holds out to us. And now that can be an uncomfortable thing, but it's an important thing. Part of this self-examination isn't just about me, right? It's not just about um, my own personal spirituality. It's also about the world around us. And this is where I think Bonhoeffer's writing here can give us aid because Bonhoeffer isn't thinking in this writing here about you know his individual spirituality he is talking about the contemporary world as he knew it in the 30s and 40s in Germany he's talking about the contemporary world and the way it runs or the ethos let's say that undergirds the world and society at that time and we get the glimmer of that where he starts talking about uh, when big words are spoken about a new humanity, a new world, a new society that will be created. And yet that only comes through annihilation. Now, obviously, Bonhoeffer is talking about Adolf Hitler and he's talking about um, the Third Reich and the Nazi rule that use those words, new humanity, a new society, we are going to create this new existence, and yet what we see is that it occurs through annihilation, it occurs through death. 
Um, and so Bonhoeffer is talking about and um, calling faithful people, hopefully, to recognize this idolatrous holding up of death and destruction um, as the as the solver of all the world's problems. Um, and so he's trying to call people away from that. Now, we don't live in the same time of life, but I think we are called to ask that question, do we live in a time that, to use Bonhoeffer's phrase, do we live in a time that idolizes death among us? Um, it's an interesting question. Bonhoeffer talks about where death is final, you know, theology is done in the context of everyday life. Um, where death is final, earthly life is all or nothing. Where death is final, fear of it combines with defiance. Well, do we see in our world today a fear of death? A defiance, a pushing away of death? Well, I, I think we do. Um, I think we can see it in terms of like the cult of the young, the, um, the idolatry of youth, let's say the constant pushing away for, of, of the aged, but also the effects of aging. You know, just a little nip and tuck here or a Botox there, and you can look perpetually in your 20s or 30s or whatever that might be. And the, young, the old or the elderly are looked down upon in favor of uh, the young. Uh, and so Bonhoeffer says, when we do that, um, when we have that kind of fear of or defiance of death, what we're doing is we're making death the final arbiter of life. Um, death holds full victory and full mastery over everything, and we're always pushing against it. This is why that very first sentence is important. The miracle of Christ's resurrection has overturned that. Not because it denies the reality of death in our world. In fact, Christian scriptures always give voice to grief and mourning and the reality of death. But it also, and it doesn't minimize that, but it also points to the fact that in that place, the life of God can be revealed. That God's life bursts forth from death. And that is what we look to. Um, we don't look for the mastery of our own life as a way to push back against death. We look for Christ's life in the midst of our own life and in the midst of those places of death. Um, because the gospel is Jesus coming to us in the midst of those times and not bringing about death or annihilation, but saying to us, I have come that you might know life and know it in abundance. God bless you as you continue your walk through the season of Lent, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.